This video is going to cover section 3.4, exponential and logarithmic equations, still part of unit 3. Um, it's pretty much a lot of solving, so it's going to be a bunch of examples. We have some properties here just that we kind of want you to remember um, or recall. The one-to-one -one properties where if you have the same base on both sides of the equation and nothing else, a to the x equals a to the y, then that means that the exponents have to be equal to each other. So we can solve that way. We also have the same thing with the log, so, or the logarithm, where if you have, um, and this should be an a, make that correction, this should be an a. If the bases are the same, like I'm showing right now, then whatever's inside the parentheses or whatever term is next to them is also going to be the same, okay? So log base a of x is equal to log base a of y, if and only if x is equal to y. Same thing with our exponents. And we also have the inverse properties where if you're trying to solve something, you want to use the inverse property to get rid of something. So log base a can get neutralized with a base of a, okay? Log base a can get neutralized again with the base and a to the power. So basically these two kind of cross each other out, but it's just equal to one, which is why it works, okay? So we're going to jump right into some super quick examples just to kind of refresh our memories a little bit here. For the first part, we're just solving for x, and we have real basic um, ones right here, okay? So this one's kind of an easy one. Um, this one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to change the base of 128 to a power of 2. So I'm going to use the 1 to 1 property, which would be 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the power of something, okay? That has to give me 128. So you kind of have to think a little bit here. Um, if you want, you can break down 128 into it, you know all of its factors. I'm not going to do the whole thing. 64 is uh, 36, I'm sorry, 32 times 2 times 2. And you would just keep on going till you get to the number of 2s. I happen to know that this is 2 to the 7th. You can go ahead and uh, check my answer if you'd like. So therefore, since these are the same, then x must be equal to 7 in this case. So kind of an easy one. Okay, just kind of Check, check to see how many times that we can factor this down to its two to the twos. The next one I'm going to have to rewrite a little bit. So I'm going to use my old rules here where I can kind of do this. Okay, so this would mean I'm going to have 6 to the power of 3 is equal to x. This is the same. These two are the same. So 6 to the power of 3 is the same as 6 times 6 times 6 which is going to be 216. Again, you can check my math if you don't believe me, but I'm pretty sure it's 216. E, negative e to the x is equal to zero is our next one. This one's a little bit tricky because you're trying to say, well, some power is gonna give me zero. Um, people's automatic response is gonna be, well, x is equal to zero, right? That's what you're gonna think. But remember that anything to the power of zero is equal to one. So that's not the case. And if you to actually graph this, you're going to see that it's not going to be, this is not going to be existent there. So this one is undefined. It belongs to what's called the empty set. Okay. Last but not least, we have 9 to the x is equal to 1 over 3. So for this one, I'm going to use the same property. I had a pair of the 1 to 1 with the same basis. I'm going to rewrite the 9 as a power of 3. So I know that 9 is 3 squared. OK, and this is equal to 1 third. Now the problem is that the 3 is on the bottom, so I'm going to have to flip this upward. So this is going to now be 3 squared to the x power or times x is equal to 3 over 1. But now I have to make this negative. Okay, so again, essentially what we're doing here is we're just going to make that three negative. So three squared times x equals three to the negative one. And I'm almost done with this problem here. I can get rid of these guys. This is going to distribute. So we have two x equals negative one, basically just the powers. And when you solve this, you can see that x is going to be equal to negative 1 half. 
that's it for those first four quick examples. They're just kind of review, reminding us how to use some of these rules, okay? We're going to go ahead and use some of the other properties now. Um, so let's go ahead and jump down to example number two. This is solve and approximate two, three decimals. Uh, I should say spaces, but two, three decimal spaces if needed. This is going to apply for all the examples here moving forward. I just wanted to write it down at least once you know what we're doing. Okay, so for this first example, it looks like we have our basis of E. So this is that one to one property we first saw. Or if the bases are the same, the exponents are the same. So all I have to do is look at these guys really. So I'm going to have 2x is equal to x squared minus 8. Okay, and you might say, oh, it's a quadratic. And yes, it is. So what we're going to have to do, let me go ahead and focus this a bit, is try to get everything over to wherever the square is. So in this case, let's move that 2x over here, which leaves us with 0, x squared minus 2x minus 8. Okay, and then we're just solving. So you know, you should know by now, if you have a quadratic, the first thing you want to try is factoring. Okay, and this one, luckily for us, does factor out to negative 4 and positive 2. So when we set each of these equal to 0, like so, we can get some, we can actually get some nice answers here. So this one's going to be, let's see, x is equal to 4. And this one's going to be x is equal to negative 2. And that's basically it for this one, okay? Um, the next step, if we were to keep going, would be to take these numbers and check them. So plug them back in and make sure it checks out. But we'll go ahead and do that in the last example because we don't want to spend too, too much time on that. That part's simple. It's just plugging it back in. Let's look at letter B now, okay? So for letter B, let me zoom in a little bit more here. We have 2 times, so 2 times 5 to the x is equal to 32. So when you have something like this, you can't really start crossing things out or anything quite yet. You want to isolate the exponential part. So the first thing you're going to do is divide both sides by that 2 to give us the 1 that we want. Okay. So this is going to be 5 to the power of x is equal to 32 over 2 is 16. Okay, and now from here you're thinking, well, 16, there's no way to write 16 in terms of 5. In other words, we can't say 5 squared is 16, 5. It's just not going to work. So we're going to have to use one of the inverse properties. So we're going to use the property that has the base and takes the log of that same base to get rid of it. So here's the inverse property, log base 5 because that's the base that I have here, 5 of x, okay, is equal to log base 5 of 16. And this right here, this is the inverse property, one of them anyway, just so you know what's going on here, okay? And what this does is it's going to get rid of this for us. It's going to just equal it to 1. So now we're just left with x is equal to log base 5 of 16. And this, we can, we, can, we can actually plug this straight into the calculator. I'm going to go ahead and have you rewrite it, though, in terms of what it should look like. So it should be log 16 over log 5. Remember that this is like going to its uh, common logarithm, which will give us a numerical answer. Okay, And when you plug that in, which I've already done, so we don't take too, too long with this, we're going to get, let me see, example two, letter B. We're going to get approximately 1.722. You see, you want to put those little approximation marks. But yeah, that's, that's basically it, guys, um, for this example. Moving on. There are lots of examples in this video. Example number three, solve and approximate. So you'll see it's the same as the other one um, as far as the directions go, okay? So for letter A, we have um, our natural base E here, okay? So what I'm going to do first, just like the one before, is I'm going to isolate my exponential part. So this is my exponential part. I'm going to get rid of the 7. So let's move 7 over 
to give us a zero right here. And then this is gonna give us e to the x is equal to 23 plus seven is just 30. And then we're gonna use our um, inverse property here to get rid of ln. So the inverse ones that we have on the other side is, is, uh, is uh, using log. But remember that ln is gonna be our natural log. So we can use ln of e on both sides, or ln I should say. So if I do ln here and ln on this side, like so, that will get rid of this for me and make it into one. So I'm just left with x is equal to ln of 30. I should have done my, I always put my l's in cursive. Sorry about that. And that's, we're almost done. We just plug this in. So x is going to be approximately, let's see, keep losing my spot here. X is going to be approximately 3.401. And that's it. And again, you can check my map. I might have maybe plugged something in wrong, but at this point, it's just calculator work, okay? But make sure you do have all your steps. Letter B is a little bit more complicated. Okay, so this one shows us not only an exponential piece, but it has, it's being multiplied, it's been, there's addition going on. So just like the other ones, we need to isolate our exponential part first, okay? So Order of operations, you want to get rid of the, the plus or minus first. So let's do minus four, minus four, which will give us six times two to the power of t plus five equals 11 minus four is just seven. Okay, then we want to divide both sides by that number in the front. In this case, it's a six to get rid of it. So we're left with two to the power of t plus five equals oh, seven over six. That's a little bit squished there, sorry about that. And then at this point, we're gonna go ahead and use our inverse property again. So we're gonna use the inverse property that has to do with the base, okay? So since my base is two, I'm gonna use log base two on both sides. And I'm just going to bring all this down. So it's going to be 2 to the power of t plus 5. Put that in parentheses. And then this would be, um, sorry, it should be on this side. 7 over 6. Okay. So basically the log just goes in front of each of these terms. That's going to get rid of this for me. And I'm left with t plus 5 equals log base two of seven over six, okay? And at this point, you can go ahead and calculate this part. I'll go ahead and show us that just so we have a little bit of calculator, calculator work here for us to see. Give me just a moment. Okay, so remember that we just go to our decimals for this one, and you're gonna go ahead and go to miscellaneous, which gives us our log. We want the one that has a base, so we're gonna click this one right here. And it's base, oh, my bad. And it's base two, okay. And then in here we have seven divided by six. So I'm getting this number, 0 0.22239, etc. So I'm just gonna write the 0 0.222. So this is t plus five equals 0.222, okay. We're going to subtract five from both sides. And that's going to give us, let's see, Four point negative four point seven seventy eight, but it's going to be rounded, so probably we want to get the approximation. So seven seven eight ish. And that's it for this one. Okay, last one on this page, and then we have I think two more examples with different parts, obviously. Letter C, okay? So for letter C, this one's an interesting one because it's not, it looks a little bit difficult, but it's actually not that bad, okay? So what we're gonna do with this is we're going to try to, because you can kind of see how it sort of looks like a quadratic, but those E's are just throwing us off. 
So we're going to rewrite this one. This one is a tricky one, okay? So make sure you do write it down. We're going to do it like this, e to the x, and then pull that 2 out like so. So I'm just separating the 2x like so. It's the same thing. Minus 3, and I'm going to put that e to the x again in parentheses. Okay, so now it looks it looks a little bit more like a quadratic. And then to make our life even easier, okay, we're gonna put we're gonna do a substitution here. We're going to let e to the x equal to capital X here. Okay, so by doing so, we can replace all our e to the x's with this big x here. X squared minus three x. And then we can factor this. So we know how to factor this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that real quickly. So to do this factorization, I have x, let's see, minus 2, x minus 1, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3. So we're good to go. And then here I'm going to go ahead and replace. So now I'm going to replace the x with e to the x. Okay, so it's going to be e to the x minus 2 and e to the x minus 1. So this substitution is not necessary, but it does help a little bit with seeing the process on what we're doing here. So if you're not sure where to start, with something like this, try to try to replace it with an x, and then you can always substitute it back in at the end so we can solve. Okay. So just like any factor, we're going to set each of these equal to zero. So e to the x minus two equals zero, e to the x minus one equals zero. Okay. And we're just going to solve like normal. So I'm going to get this just right here. Let's see if I can move this a little bit. It's a little bit crooked right now. All right, so for the first one, okay, we would add 2 to both sides. We get e to the x equals 2. And this is a simple one. All we got to do is put the ln in the front. So we would do ln to both sides to get rid of that e. Okay, so again, we're doing ln to get rid of the e, which gives us x equals ln of 2 which is approximately, I don't know, let me check, 0.693. Okay, and again, this is just plugging it in. And then for this one, we do the same thing, but now we're going to be solving, you know, with add, by adding 1 to both sides. So we get e to the x equals 1. And this one's a little bit easier because you should know that any power to this, or I'm sorry, any base to this power is going to equal to 1. So x just equals 0, because remember, e to the 0 equals 1. That's why. And if now you can do this, you can do the ln and, and find it that way as well. Okay? But that's it. That's it for example number 3. Moving on. More examples. I said lots of examples in this one. We have solving logarithmic equations. So now we're going to do, again, more solving, but different, um, different types. Okay, we're going to see some more lns and logs of these ones. The ones we saw before were mostly with the bases, where we use the log to get rid of the base. Okay, now we're going backwards. So for letter A, okay, we have ln of x is equal to 2 thirds. So what you want to do to get x by itself is get rid of the e. I'm sorry, the ln, which is what I just kind of gave the answer to. So we're going to take the, um, the base of e to both sides, and we're going to raise all this to that, to, from that base. So we have something like this. So e to the ln of x and then e to the 2 thirds. And what this does with our inverse properties, it gets rid of this for us, neutralizes it. So we're left with x is equal to e to the power of 2 thirds. And this you would just plug into the calculator because when we can't really calculate that. So when we do that, we get x is approximately um, 1.948. Okay, so pretty easy. Um, just, you know, make sure you do show these steps. Okay, so just give me the answer. I know these are easy, but do not just give me the answer. For the second one, this one is going to use our one-to-one -one property. 
where we have, you know, same, we kind of have the same thing going on here. So these two are the same and these two are the same. So I'm just gonna pull down whatever is left over. So two X minus three equals X plus four. And we just solve like normal, okay? So minus X on both sides gives me X minus three equals four. Add three to both sides, X is equal to seven. Nice simple one for this one, okay? Next one, letter C. This one's a cool one because it not only it not only uses the one-to-one -one property, but it goes back to the properties of logarithms, which is the one you had right before this uh, set of notes. So notice that we have a minus, okay? We're going to condense first. So I'm going to condense this side right here. Remember that minus means division. So I'm gonna have log of four X divided by this one, 12 plus X. And this one just stays the same. Okay, so now that I've condensed this into this, okay, now I can go ahead and do what I did before with the one-to-one -one property where this is gone. Not that it's gone, but you know, we don't have to really listen to it anymore. And we're left with, 4x over 12 plus x is equal to 2. And then we solve. So this one, we're going to go ahead and put this over 1, and we're going to cross multiply. It's probably the quickest way to do this one, which will give me 4x times 1 is 4x, 2 times 12 plus x, okay? Nice simple equation. Distribute. So we get 24 plus 2x on the, the right side. 4x just comes down. Solve for x. So we end up with 2x is equal to 24. Divide both sides by 2. And x is equal to 12. Okay, nice and easy that way. All right, last two on this page. I think there's one more after this. Hopefully this video is not too, too bad. It's just like I said, it's a lot of examples. Um, letter D has a natural log. Okay, so remember that the inverse of the natural log is gonna be that base of E. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. So just like the ones before, you kind of want to get this isolated by itself. So we're gonna move that seven first. Okay, we're gonna do minus seven minus seven which gives me three ln of x is equal to five minus seven is negative two okay we still want to get this ln by i'm sorry this x by itself so divide both sides by three and we're left with ln of x is equal to negative two over three and it kind of looks similar to one of the ones we saw earlier with an E base. So we're going to go ahead and do the next step to get rid of LN by using a base of E to both sides. So we have E to the LN of X is equal to E. Oh, I should have done that more spaced out. Negative two thirds. Okay, so basically E to both of these. And that means when we do this point, this will go away. To a one. So we're left with x equals e to the negative two thirds. Approximate this in your calculator. And we get what do you, uh, 0. 0.513. Okay. Last one on this page. And I think that might be, we have, might have one more. I'm going to remember for sure. Let's try this one though. So we have three log base four of six X equals to nine. So again, I'm gonna get this log by itself by dividing both sides by three, which gives me log base four, six times X is equal to three. Be careful here because this might throw some of you off. This six and the X are, are think of it like this is in parentheses, it's part of the log, okay? So what we're gonna do is on the one before we had to use base E, 
This one has a base of four, so I'm going to use a base of four, and I'm just going to put it right here. That way it's a little bit more obvious. Okay, so four to the power of all this, and then four to the power of three. That will get rid of all this for me. So I'm left with six times x is equal to four to the third power, which is the same as four times four times four is 64. Okay, divide both sides by six. And x is going to be approximately, let me see, 10, point, 10 and 2 thirds, so 10.6 repeated. All right, almost done. One more. Last one. This is the one I was talking about where you have to check your answers. Okay. Yay, we're checking for what's called extraneous solutions. Remember that an extraneous solution is a solution that, you know, we work it out this way and it comes out okay. But when you graph it or you try to apply it, it's not going to work out so well because it doesn't actually, it doesn't actually exist there. Okay. So for this one, we're, again, we're trying to isolate the x's. So to do that, we want to get the log into one log only. So the first thing you want to do here is condense. Just like we did that maybe a couple examples before. We're going to condense this side here. So that's going to give me log. Remember that addition means multiplication. So 5x times x minus 1. And actually, I'm going to put that in parentheses because it's, you know, it's more than one term. Okay, so this times this is equal to the number 2. Okay, then we want to get rid of the log. So to get rid of log, remember that we need to know what its base is. This is the common log because there's no base. So the common log has a base of 10. So if you forgot that, put that here. Remember, log is the same as log base 10. Okay, so we're going to use a base of 10 on both sides to get rid of that log for us. So we're going to have 10 log. You can put the 10 here if you want. 5x times x minus 1 is equal to uh, 10 to the power of 2. So I'm just putting this base of 10 underneath, pretty much right in front of these two, okay? And that's going to get rid of all of this for me. So I'm left with 5x times x minus 1 is equal to 10 squared, which is just 10 times 10, or 100, okay? And then we just solve it. So we distribute 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times negative 1 is minus 5x. And we're left with a quadratic, which should be fun. Okay, We want to get everything over to the side of a quadratic, so we're going to subtract 100 from both sides, which gives us 5x squared minus 5x minus 100 is equal to 0. At this point, you would try to factor it. Um, if you cannot factor it, you use quadratic formula. Okay, so I'm going to do something that's going to make my life a lot easier here. I'm going to divide everything by that leading coefficient, 5. Because I'm allowed to do that as long as I do it to every single term on both sides of the equation. And what that's going to do for me is it's going to make this way easier to factor. So this is going to be x squared minus x minus 20, okay, 100 divided by 5 is 20, is equal to 0. And this is way easier to factor. So if we do this correctly, I believe that's going to be minus 5 plus 4, which means that x is equal to positive 5, and x is equal to negative 4, OK? Yay, we're done, but not really, because now we have to check the answers, okay? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to plug these numbers back into what I had way up here, okay? So we have to check now. So we're going to check x equals 5 and x equals negative 4, because one of them is probably extraneous. Therefore, that's the whole reason why we're doing this example, right? So I'm going to plug it into, you can do... This one, the original, which is probably recommended just in case you mess up here. Um, if you're absolutely positive that this one is correct, you can also use this one. I'm absolutely positive that it's correct because I already did it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use this one right here. Okay. So let me go ahead and rewrite that down here. So log, and then I have 5x times x minus 1 is equal to 2. Okay. So let's check that with 5 first. So log, and then 5 times something, and then that, that something is also in here, minus 1 is equal to 2. So in my parentheses, I have a 5, basically. Okay. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 minus 1 is 4. Okay. So I have log of 25 times 4 is equal to 2. 25 times 4 is 100. So that means I have log of 100 is equal to 2. And if I remember that this is the same thing as base 10, okay, I can put that 10 here and rewrite this like so. 10 squared is equal to 100, okay, and 10 squared is in fact 100. So x equals 5 is good to go. So this is a solution, which means this one's probably not going to be the solution, but let's go ahead and just double check, okay. So we're going to do the same thing, log of 5 times that negative 4 times, again, that negative 4 minus 1. I'm just going step by step here. So if you want to jump ahead of me, you can. Okay, we're putting those negative 4s in there. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Negative 4 minus 1 is going to be negative um, 5. Okay, and then we have our log of this is equal to 2. So log of all this equals 2. Negative 20 times negative 5 is going to be 100. And look what happens. Tricky, tricky. Okay, so we have basically the same thing, right? So again, let's put our 10 here, go around, go around. So 10 to the power of 2, just like the one I had before, is 100. So it looks like this one has no extraneous solutions. So the final thing you would do for something like this, if this happens, is you would graph it, okay, because it looks like, the, like we said there are both solutions. So we're going to go ahead and do that just super quick to make sure that this is, this is both going to work. So give me just a Okay, so here is the function. Notice that I went ahead and made it in y equals, and that 2 became negative because you're basically taking the 2 and moving it back over. So we can see here that we do, in fact, have a intercept at 5, which is one of the solutions that we had. Okay, however, if you look at the domain, it's basically 0 to infinity, right? So that means that all the negative answers over here are not going to work. So in this case, even though it came out algebraically, okay, unless I made a mistake somewhere, this one is going to be, in fact, extraneous. Because if you check it graphically, we do not have that number on the domain. Okay, so word to the wise, show me the work. Okay, I, I still want to see all the work here. But make sure that you do one last check graphically to make sure that, you know, both of them are, in fact, part of your intercept. In this case, again, it's just going to be that 5. And that is it, guys. That is it for this video. So if you have any questions, as always, let me know.